Are you an entrepreneur, small business owner, or consultant looking to boost your authority, influence, and impact? The Author Switch Podcast with best-selling, award-winning author Karma Spence is your answer. Tune in for actionable advice, powerful strategies, and engaging interviews to turn on your author switch and take your business to the next dimension. The Author Switch. Hello, and welcome to the Author Switch podcast. My name is Karma Spence, and I help entrepreneurs write a lead attracting book in 90 days or less. And today's episode is featuring my special guest, Paulette Ensign, a teacher by training and nature. She earned two music education degrees in her first career, teaching elementary schools string instruments. Paulette Ensign, Tips Products Publishing Agency founder, was clueless. She'd sell 2 million copies of her 16-page, 110 ideas for organizing your business life in multiple languages and formats without a penny on advertising. That prompted subject matter experts in many topics to convert their knowledge to cash as tips booklets and other products online and offline. Between teaching strings and developing Tips Products Publishing Agency, Paulette was a professional organizing and productivity consultant and speaker early in the organizing and productivity industry. Paulette became an East Coast transplant to San Diego, California in 1996, living where snow is a choice. Gosh, I wish... I was doing that. <laughs> One she doesn't make. Her mindset is wrapped in a, a mantra that she refuses to get old as she's getting older. So far, so good. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Welcome to episode 59 of the Author Switch podcast. Here is my wonderful, wonderful guest, Paulette Ensign, who I met many years ago when she was my roomie at a convention or conference. I don't know what you'd call it. Screening, yeah. Yeah. So welcome, Paulette. Thank you for joining me today. Well, it was time to revisit and reconnect, you know? So Absolutely. I was delighted by your response. <laughs> yes. So you've been into tips products for like ages. <laughs> yeah, ages. Three decades. More than three decades. Yeah. So wow, that is a really long time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's great that they're still doing well. And now you've kind of come up with a a new way to use them, which we'll be talking about today, to kind of help authors sell their yeah. books and make more money before, after, and around the book. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so that everybody's on the same page, let's start off with the basics. What is a tip? It is a soundbite that reflects your expertise. What it is not is it's not necessarily the cure to cancer or rocket science. And I'll give you a couple of examples and go from there because there's plenty to go to from there. While I was a professional organizing consultant and productivity specialist a long time ago, the big thing certainly was clutter. So it could be all kinds of clutter, paper, space, all kinds of clutter. So here's one of those tips. Take the biggest thing out of the pile first. It immediately reduces the pile and motivates you to keep going. Now that has saved lives. Even though it sounds so incredibly simplistic, Karma, you might be amazed to know that these tips have nothing to do with our intelligence because each of us has a different body of brilliance. Absolutely. That just never thought of that, who are among the smartest people that I know. They just never thought of it. And it's I'll give you another example. I was at the, state, the county fair, which here in San Diego is a big deal. And I was with one of my closest friends, and we are total opposites in a lot of ways. And I happen to have very hungry clothes. So things that are aimed for my mouth frequently make a stop on whatever I'm wearing, <laughs> a shirt or whatever. And this was no different. So I'm walking along, it's a hot summer day, and somehow this chocolate syrup managed to miss my mouth, but landed on my white shirt, 
that I had just bought. And I was not thrilled, but I was not surprised either. And a few words that are not for publication. My friend <laughs> looked at me and she said, <laughs> I know you can't imagine that, right? My friend looked at me and she said, don't worry. She said, you know, white vinegar will get that out. And I looked at her like she had 12 heads. And she <laughs> felt like I was confused. And she said, oh, come on, you're smart. You know that white vinegar will get that out. I said, yes, I am smart. However... I want to give you a reason why I don't know that. If you took the top thousand descriptors of my mother, nowhere on there would be anything remotely related to cleaning skills. How could she <laughs> teach me something that she didn't know? <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, I know a whole lot of stuff. I'm more common sense, basic, salt of the earth kind of knowledge, grassroots stuff. Literally and figuratively. My friend, she, I'm sure, eats at least one meal of statistics a day. So she knows a whole bunch of different stuff that I really don't care about. And in some ways, vice versa. But there's the point that you may know things that are useful, things that are obscure, things that, and I know you enough to know, you know, I'm not just shooting in the wind, you know, in the breeze here that you know very different stuff than I know doesn't make it right or wrong. And by right. the way, those tips, lots and lots of folks who are subject matter experts and thought leaders are very concerned about the value of these tips. Like, you know, this is not a book. I know, I said, I understand that. However, we'll talk in a moment about people's learning styles. So here's the three very likely values that a tip like the one about take the biggest thing out of the pile first which by the way it could be laundry or it could be paper it's very very versatile <laughs> take the biggest thing out of the pile and digital absolutely yes so you may not have even thought about that i have lots of lots of friends who just never thought about that just didn't surface in their thinking doesn't make them a bad person the second possibility is you knew the information, but you haven't used it in a while, so you forgot about it. And the third possibility I personally love, when you hear it, it's confirmation from an expert that what you already know, some expert is just telling you also. So it's great confirmation. Those things are all valuable, and they're valuable beyond that. They're valuable in the way of your subconsciously finding trust in the person who's telling you about it because it's a bite-sized piece of information that's easily digestible that is easily executable that is a foundation to build on so that you can go in a graduated way more advanced more advanced more advanced which is great for your business too because mm -hmm. when you give too much too soon it is a sure path to disaster. And the likelihood is you will never, ever see that person again. Just imagine if you and Christopher, the first time you ever talked, one of you gave your entire life history. I you probably, well, I doubt it. I doubt it because no matter how long you were to, sitting together, you couldn't possibly have told everything about all the years up to that point. That is a crucial thing. It's okay, and in fact, it's preferred to leave them wanting more, leave them wanting hungry. You know that you're hungry for more information, so they will come back to you because you've already built some trust with them. You are dispensing the information in easily graspable format so that that person's self-confidence in that area that they're coming to for the first time Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can do this. I don't have to be worried or embarrassed or any of those things. I'll give you another example just for grins and giggles here. Imagine you're at a social event and the inevitable question of what do you do comes up from somebody. Well, this one person there is just chomping at the bit to be able to have somebody ask her. And she said, well, I'm a financial planner. And right now I'm writing like a 500 page book on every financial instrument that currently exists. 
Now there's this half circle of people and her audience standing there being as polite as they can while silently in their head, they're going, yeah, I know I should be investing and learning how to do that. I can barely balance my checking account and know just only about how to make deposits and withdrawals. Well, one by one, these people excuse themselves. That's not doing a favor to anybody to start with a 500 page book on every imaginable financial instrument available in that moment. I'm not saying never. I'm saying it's not the starting point. The starting point is basic. You would not teach a five-year-old child about really convoluted and you know complex concepts as the first thing out. You would not give them more than a simplistic taste because otherwise it's just going to not work. And I like to talk in positives rather than in negatives. So whether you felt like you told Christopher everything about you the first time you talked, my guess, knowing you, is you probably didn't. It may have felt that way, but no. So what else you want to know from me today? <laughs> well, one question came up while you were talking is, so I've got this head full of tips, but I, I know them. I take them for granted. How do you pull those tips out when you just take them for granted? Perfect question. Perfect. That is such a typical thing to surface because we've all been in our area. We've been swimming in our pond for quite a while. And there are people that aren't even sure they want to swim, much less in that pond. However, something's appealing. To the best of your ability, and I've got a couple of answers to this question. To the best of your ability, think back on when you started, because none of us came out of our mothers knowing what we know today. <laughs> Just didn't happen that way. We feel so, like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. However, and then there's a way to really test whether you've simplified it or not. Find someone, and it could be of any age, find someone who you view as fairly intelligent to begin with. Maybe not the sharpest knife in the drawer. However, they're above average intelligence. And tell them a tip, you know, or ask them something about your expertise and see what they answer. See if they understand what you might have shared with them even though they've never had any experience in your area. Once you've gotten, and I've done this for a bunch of people, where I, I own the fact that I am above average intelligence. However, there's a whole lot of things I do not know about. A lot of things I don't even want to know about. I am not somebody who easily leans into technology, for instance. So I am the perfect guinea pig to make sure that a person who's a tech nerd speaks plain, simple English for the totally uninitiated. So find someone, it might be a family member, it might be a friend, it might be a colleague, and just run it past them and be willing to return the favor when right. you decide that they also need to have some exposure to my work so that we can get their tips and do cooperative stuff, you know, so that everybody ends up putting out information that is both a marketing tool and a revenue stream at the same time. How's that for doing great double duty? That's awesome. Now, I know that you started off with tips booklets, but you've expanded yes. beyond that. And I think most people are familiar with a tip booklet, but what other kind of products and services? are tips related. Yes, I definitely will easily tell you that. And what you just said is kind of interesting because I know in the in the just the quasi intelligent English speaking people in the world, there's no way we could ever reach everyone who will be our client. So thinking that a lot of people might know what a booklet is, there's so many definitions of it that I want to make sure that we have 
clarity around the one that I do. So I appreciate you you pointing that, that one out. Assumption on my part, just because I know you. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So four by nine inches in North America, that's a number 10 envelope. That is a very standard size. And it doesn't need to be more than that. The template that I have come to create over time is 52 tips. Now, you, some people jump right at it as to what that 52 is about. Other people are ahead and go 52. Hmm. I don't know. I was thinking 101. No, not 101. 52. One a week. Yes. One a week. Yes. <laughs> you win the prize yet to be determined. Uh, 52 tips. It is so flexible in what can be made from that. And the delivery formats can be both either or online or offline or both. And there's some situations where it makes sense to have both. It is possible to do an unlimited number of delivery formats. The more easily identified ones are booklet, both printed and as a PDF, a designed PDF by a graphic designer, a professional graphic designer. See, I'm sticking words in here because people can make an assumption. And they go, oh, I know how to do Photoshop and I know how to do in design and it looks like crap when they do it. That is a high price to pay for cutting corners to save a buck. Mm -hmm. And that there are so many people now, and we found a couple of really great ones who do a really excellent job and it's not a second mortgage to pay for it. So it's worth every bit of it because when you see the direction that I'm going to be pointing about the sales model, the business model, you'll see why it's really important to have a good representation of how you do business, that you are a professional, that it doesn't look like it's homemade, that the information in there is valuable and worthy of very vast distribution. So. Second thing, as far as formats, the easiest second thing to do is audio. And with that, you get to do a little more conversational because there needs to be some bridge when you're speaking it between each tip to read, do this, do that, because. Tip two, do that and do this and do that because. <laughs> it would sound like a robot or it could yeah. easily sound like a robot. It's more conversational. Right. So that also addresses the concern that some folks have about, but I like narrative. Good. I'm not saying no or never. I'm just saying not now. There's plenty of time and space for that. The third possibility is a card deck with Ooh. a tip on each card. Yes. And those are very popular, very okay. popular. Each of those three things that I said so far can be done tangible and they can be done digitally. Mm -hmm. I got a real dressing down from some of my close friends about how nobody is printing audio CDs anymore. Now, I mm. haven't lately. Yeah, right. And I'm going to really antiquate myself if I try to put that out there. Okay, fine. For those people that are driving older used cars, Yes, you still do have a drive in your car for an audio CD. However, I have given up the ghost on that and I'm no longer suggesting that because there's still a whole lot of other delivery formats that you can do. Yeah. You can do puzzles, jigsaw puzzles and or crossword puzzles online or fully produced. We've done some magnificent puzzles, crossword puzzles and jigsaw puzzles. Which adds well, gamification. Yes, exactly. In public. Um, gamification in public. Yes. Uh, I had a children's author for the first time a couple of years ago, and I was looking to see if, in fact, everything that I had done with nonfiction authors worked for children's books, and it did. Awesome. So we got beautiful puzzles from the artwork of the book, which was very beautifully designed to begin with. and just did all kinds of great stuff. Crossword puzzles, the tips can be the clues for the words. And it's, it can be done online and it can be done to print out and do by pencil or pen. 
wherever you fall in the crossword puzzle syndrome. So yeah, lots and lots of different. And by the way, I'm not going to go further in the kinds of delivery formats. What I am going to say, though, is it could be an easy assumption to make. That's only in English. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to do a little pregnant pause there because once it goes in, it's like, oh, Spanish and in Rhode Island, Portuguese and in <laughs> around up in up in Canada, certain places, French. And mm-hmm. it's a rinse and repeat, my friends. <laughs> Once you've got the stuff in English, you can make it available. You can respond to an inquiry from a serious person, this decision maker, to translate it at a professional level. So the extent of what you can do with one 52-tip manuscript as a Word document, and we'll get to that in a second, too. Yeah. What's next? Well, I want to break for a quick commercial. And then when we get back, we're going to tie this all in to authors and what they can do with with this. Absolutely. Have you ever felt overwhelmed with book ideas? Either you had too many and couldn't choose, or you struggled with coming up with just one in the first place. Trust me, you're not alone. It's a maze out there. But guess what? I've been through it, and I've got the map. Hi, my name is Karma Spence, and I've shared this map in my new book, It All Starts With an Idea, now available on Amazon. It's like GPS, but for book ideas. Whether you're a seasoned author or just starting out, this is the compass you've been seeking. Are you ready to embark on a game-changing journey? Let's do it together. Order your copy now on Amazon. Welcome back to the Author Switch Podcast. We are talking to Paulette Edson, the tips products queen. And before the commercial, we were talking about what a tip is and how you can pull it from your head and put it out into the world in multiple formats. And now I want to bring it all together. And how does a tips product help your book before, during, and after? the launch. Go, Paul. And now you say go. (laughs) (laughs) Because if I got ideas to share with you, before the book is started, and it may never get started, I'm not trying to do anything to dissuade people from coming to you to create their book. However, I think it's, we, it's common knowledge that some people say someday I'll write a book and they never do. And that's okay. Because we have alternatives. For the people that say, yeah, I really want to write a book and I'm going to, in the process, before you even start writing a single word of the book, create a 52-tip manuscript of tips because you can use those tips before they're produced any further, just in a Word doc, you can use those to lay a trail of breadcrumbs to announce the topic that you're dealing with. And with 52 tips, you can drop one a week on a list or on a group or on your social media or lots and lots of other places. Any interviews you're doing, just like this, mm-hmm. where you announce, in essence, your expertise and you're giving valuable information and you're not with your hand out as far as asking for somebody to buy something from you. All you're doing is saying, hey, look, this is coming. This is coming and subscribe to this because blah, blah. And the more that you do, maybe five or six at a t- one at a time, but five or six, and then maybe a call to action. But in each one of those drops of a tip goes your domain name. Visit our website to get a free bonus. And that free bonus is something downloadable. It could be an article. It could be all kinds of things downloadable though. So it's automated and not requiring your attention or the attention of a virtual assistant. And in exchange for their email address, you're giving them something. And as you build and build and build, you've got the ability to build relationship with them, which is crucial, absolutely crucial. You've got speaking gigs, you've got friends, you've got colleagues, you've got family, some of whom you still speak to. You've got people all over the place. You've got neighbors. Yeah, you heard me. Um, 
So invite them to go to your website. And it's not a hard sell by anybody's definition. So that's what happens before. And by the way, that 52 tip manuscript can help you organize your book. Mm -hmm. Because I've got a formula that works that really, truly makes it easier for you to then flesh out what is a skeleton in the 52 tips. And it makes life so much easier for you than whoever the brilliant advisor is who's guiding you, like karma. <laughs> so that's the before. Yeah. Don't you love it when a client comes to you and they may be a newcomer to writing, however, they prepared whatever they can within the con construct of who they are, what they understand, what they can manage to do. doesn't right. matter if the spelling is off. That's an easy fix or the grammar sucks. You know, those things are easy. Once we get the structure of what it is, that's, that's a whole different ease to moving forward. Let's go on and talk in terms of what happens while you're writing the book, when you are in the midst of writing the book or a section, you can also do shout outs or call out, I forget what they're, they're called, right in the body of a page where it will stand out as something you want to really reinforce. You can use a tip that way also. And you can, you can use those tips again to flesh out more if you feel it's really, really important to reinforce something. So that can be the starting point, the, the springboard to flesh out content that you might be struggling with, but somehow it's easier when there's part of it already written. Right. Those are some of the things that can be done while you're writing the book. And again, each and every time, make sure like a broken record, you are saying, please visit our website to collect a free gift. Because the point is you want to get them back to your site and you want their email address. I'm Absolutely. going to keep saying that because it makes the difference. And that's where we're going to land today in how you can build a strong relationship with the people who are buying your books on Amazon. So I think we can jump right ahead to what happens once it's done. Because then I'm going to go in and flesh out and fill in the blanks here that I'm purposely skipping over. Once it's done, you can think, oh my gosh, the book is done now. I really can't do any of these additions that I could have done earlier. Well, don't despair. There are some very brilliant book advisors who come on all kinds of names as far as a book Sherpa, a coach, a consultant having to do specifically with books. Mm -hmm. I'm using an overarching generic term of book advisors. There's some very astute, well-informed book advisors who know that putting in the bonus invitation in that book is important. Mm -hmm. And putting it in more than once is even better. Putting it somewhere in the very, very beginning of the book is the best. Because, yeah. uh, it looks, see, I'm confirming what you already know. Yeah. Don't you feel like an even bigger shot than you already are? That's what it is, yes. <laughs> so the reason for having that in the front of the book, as for, close to the front as you can, is because when your book buyer is going to buy your book and they click on the preview, they may see that invitation before they even end up buying the book. And then they go back and they give you their email address and you're in good shape with all of that. So let's just say that you weren't working with karma. First of all, it's a bad idea to work with somebody that is less fabulous than karma is. And she's not paying me to say this. I know this for a fact. And she's paying me with kindness. Um, you can go in there. You can have your graphic designer go in and it won't be a ton of money to add that right into one of the empty pages of the book. Now, if that doesn't sound too enticing, that's okay, because we still have other options. Remember that 52 tip manuscript you did? You yeah. can produce that into a tips booklet. And you can put it both in the Kindle section and in the book section. 
to sell it so you've got even another revenue stream and your contact information's all over those suckers. So that is totally doable. Plus, Amazon's going to love you even more because they're going to get some more money from you, from the people that buy that, that buy the booklet, that buy the audio, and it gives you something to bundle. Now, what's the big deal here about Amazon books? Well, I recently had a conversation with somebody who said they sold 1,300 books on Amazon last year. And the person said, that's supposed to be really good. I said, in that context, yes, it is. I said, got any idea who bought any of those books? Oh, no, I don't. Oh, so how are you going to build a relationship with them to stay in touch and offer them more of your good stuff? Gee, I don't know. Huh. So that's one of the many reasons and one of the reasons it stuck in my brain. And when I realized that I do have tools for you to be able to cross that situation in a high integrity, very honest, legal, moral, and ethical way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest, biggest thing. Now, I know we're getting close to the... I think we have just a little bit more time left, right? Or are we over? We're probably over, but <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Yeah. So for the folks who are coming to your website and downloading, you can stay in touch with them now. And that doesn't mean every time you reach out, you want to sell them something no. because you've got educational marketing tools now where you provide them education. Every fifth or sixth one, maybe you'll show them an opportunity to invest in something you've got. Which leads me to an opportunity I want to make available to you. Today, we had a basically 30 minute window. And what you paid for to do this was a half hour of your time, for which I greatly appreciate your choosing. On the 24th of February, I am going to be doing a masterclass that is the same title as what this interview is about. Now, I know some of you who are listening to the replay, it might have, you might be listening to it later than February 24th, but fear not, I am going to be scheduling this again and probably again and again. The very next one from when we are recording this live will be February 24th. When you go to tipsproducts.com and you go to the shop, the very top of it, it says there's a link there for upcoming events and the link that says Savvy Author, which of course you are. Click on that. It's my gift to you and I will go into greater depth on the things that we didn't have time for today. What I will tell you is this. The business model that I teach and that I live by is bulk sales and content licensing. I do not I sell single topics and that's a big differentiator and a better way to make money and help more people. So I would love to have the opportunity to teach you more. This has been such fun that I hope you've had half as much fun as I've had doing this. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Again, what was that website? Tipsproducts.com. Don't Perfect. lose your S along the way. T-I-P-S-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S.com. And if all is and lost... Google my name, you know, that'll do it. And I'll put a link to it in the show notes as well. Terrific. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, this is the end of this episode of the Author Switch podcast. This is your host, Karma Spence, saying ciao for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Author Switch podcast and would like to show your support, there are a few ways that you can do that. First, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Additionally, leaving a rating and review would greatly help me reach more listeners and continue providing valuable content. To stay up to date with the Author Switch podcast and gain access to additional information on amplifying your authority, influence, and thought leadership through books, you can follow me on LinkedIn at Karma Spence. For those interested in catching up on previous episodes, including those no longer available on podcast platforms, you can find them all at authorswitch.com forward slash episodes. 
where you can choose to watch or listen to them at your convenience. Thank you so much for your support and for being a part of the Author Switch community.